Welcome back to the bluegrass on this beautiful July evening. Uh, we're going to take a walk and we got a few different things we're working on. Maxi, this little black lab, is going to be introduced to uh, retrieving in the water with the dummy launcher. Uh, Lola, this big yellow lab here, <laughs> she's here for uh, fat camp. <laughs> We got to go through the fat camp portion before we can get to the adventure portion. So we're kind of just walking her and getting her in shape. And somewhere around here, I have a uh, Jack Russell. So my man George is with me. Uh, he's running shotgun today. He's also on Jack Russell watch uh, patrol. So Georgie, go get that Jack Russell. Come on, Charlotte, let's take a walk. So we send Georgie after the Jack Russell and then Charlotte and I will take these dogs and we'll walk. And what we're gonna do is let Maxi burn off a little energy and kind of get used to being at the farm before we ask him to do something complicated. With Lola, uh, we're just burning up calories, you know? And that's really the key, guys. If you ever get let your dog get a little too big, uh, well, listen, the first thing you do is you start thinking, well, maybe I could feed them a little less and walk them a little more. And that's, uh, that's where you start. And the great thing is, is that as you go out and you walk and you do some exploration and climbing and adventure and then the dog starts to build muscle mass and the more muscle mass that it builds then the more calories that it will you know be able to burn up that it don't get stored as fat. And with these labs I mean listen it's a dog bred for cold weather climates so of course they're going to pick up and store fat easily. So I know you don't have to tell me in the comments I know it's a tough uh, uphill battle but guys look if you let your lab get fat uh, when it's young, then you're going to have a really fat dog when it's old. <laughs> and, then, and all that extra weight is super hard on their joints. What always surprises me, kind of amazes me, is I have uh, tons and tons of, of dogs come and, uh, you know, nowadays almost all the dogs come with some type of uh, supplement, glucosamine or chondroitin or, you know, whatever, okay? But the dog has a supplement on the one hand and it's you know, 20 pounds overweight on the other hand. So listen, you can't buy health, okay? The way you're gonna get health out of your dog, a good healthful dog comes from getting out and doing interesting stuff and, and, and moving and, you know, developing a positive mental and, and physical balance, okay? And that's what we're out here today doing is we're working on establishing a nice positive physical and mental balance, you know? Developing that brain-body synergy, you know? Because remember, uh, the brain uses a lot of calories, right? So people a lot of times will think, well, I'm gonna go exercise. I'm gonna run or get on the treadmill or whatever, and I'm gonna burn calories. Hey, thinking, thinking uses a lot of calories. And so then, you know, what comes with that is people say, oh, and well, I'm gonna have my dog do a dog puzzle, right? I'm gonna give it a Kong and let it lick some food out of a Kong. Well, do you know how much, you know, brain power it takes to lick food out of a Kong? Just about zero, okay? Look at this though, like to come out here and successfully navigate a wild and uh, interesting environment, it, 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 it takes a ton of mental energy, right? And it takes a ton of physical energy both. Look at this little Jack Russell. You know, here's little Jack Russell, what are you doing? This little dog, you're gonna see her, you'll notice I have a leash on her, oh! <laughs> so she can't get away from me. But what you're gonna see over the course of the video is that she pops in and out of the video over and over and over again. And I wish you could feel her heart because her heart is going about 100 miles an hour. Okay, so what all am I doing here, right? I'm burning calories, right? And I got her little brain going a thousand miles an hour because she's smelling and hunting and cataloging smells and sights and sounds, you know? Okay, so by the time I take her back to the kennel, what do I always say? A tired dog is a good dog, okay? But a tired dog is also a dog that has nice uh, body composition, okay? So let's add to that. A tired dog is a good dog and a tired dog generally ends up with good body composition. Okay, so let's get back to walking. Are you <laughs> are you scared of the cameraman, Lola? She's looking at the cameraman. Look, she, she wasn't sure. <laughs> She's like, who's up there getting us? Look, that's funny. The yellow lab guard dog, Jean. Look at her hackles up. This is crazy, guys. Like, <laughs> what happens sometimes is like if you change like the silhouette, the um, the cameraman backed up to where her son was, uh, where her body was between uh, us and uh, the son, okay? And so all you could see was the silhouette. And since she has the camera, uh, you know, over her face, Lola didn't know what that was. And so she tried to hackle up and look a little scary. Now, I ain't too convinced on how much scaring that uh, Lola's gonna do, but I give her an A for effort. Oh. Now, over here is a pond, and this pond needs to be dredged a little bit. 
Uh, it's got a lot of algae in it and stuff, but what we normally see is a whole bunch of frogs. So we're gonna go over here and uh, see if we can scare some frogs into the pond and see how the dogs respond to it. Uh, I would imagine that No Name will just go busting through the pond like he always does, but I'm kinda anxious to see what the Jack Russell does. So let's walk over here. You guys might not be able to see very well, but we're gonna try. Ooh, Lola, let's go frog hunting. And there they go. They are off hunting frogs. Now about every time that I put this pond in the video, somebody has to ask me if any of these dogs died due to the blue-green algae, you know. Uh, no, guys, this is duckweed. It's not uh, blue-green algae. Look, we're sitting no name out there, and Lola's going out there with him, and hopefully none of them are die on the way back. Look, 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 cameraman, after a frog, after a frog. <laughs> well, cameraman probably wasn't fast enough to catch that, but that Jack Russell got after a frog there for just a second, and uh, that's pretty funny. Okay, now, so what's going on here? A lot of times, a lot of times people ask me, hey, you know, why do I let the young retriever puppies aggravate Henry and aggravate No Name and, you know, because we obviously wouldn't want that to happen in the long run in a field environment. Uh, but guys, remember guys, I don't have these dogs for a very long time. And so what I have to do is I have to get them in the water and swimming and wanting to fetch and wanting to adventure and wanting to explore as early as possible. And so sometimes I just have to kind of make uh, do, I have to take some shortcuts. And so like in this instance, I know that No Name has a physical advantage on Maxie. So Maxie's not really able to go out there and take the dummy away from No Name or in any way like interfere with No Name's ability to you know retrieve. Okay, he can aggravate No Name, and that's cool. And I know some of you are out there saying, Stoney, that's not cool. It's not cool at all, but that's No Name's job. His job is not to be a special retriever. His job is to be a special mentor dog. And I guarantee you that little bit of stuff that we're doing here and this little bit of farm adventure, when we go back over to the pond, okay, you're gonna see Maxie get in the water and it's, it's, you know, it's gonna be like old hat to him because he's been doing it with No Name so long and the fact that No Name is not there and he's gonna have a clear line to the bumper on his own, he's gonna be like, wow, <laughs> you know? And he's gonna be able to get out of Mr. No Name's shadow and do it all by himself. You know, it's kind of like when you're the little brother and uh, you know, you're playing basketball and a big brother always, you know, is beating you and with the neighborhood kids and then the big brother moves out and now you're the basketball player in the neighborhood, you know? All right, we'll go walk a little far. Farther. All right, now we had a little bit of fun chasing frogs, and so we're going to head down a lane where deer are always bedded up, okay? So uh, we're going to try to maybe jump some deer up so we can practice uh, getting the dogs to not chase deer, you know? I mean, really, guys, everything is the same with dog training. You just kind of uh, put yourself into situations and then uh, work through it as best as you can. Now, this will be a little tough for the cameraman, so she'll just have to fall in behind us all. Come on, cameraman. A little low line area. Okay, and then we'll get over here and I'll show you guys where the deer are always bedded up. All right, we have two dogs with us, George. We're missing two. Are they with the cameraman? Yep, right behind her. There's one. <laughs> okay, we're missing a Charlotte and a... <laughs> here they come. Oh, okay, look who rescued the Jack Russell. Good job, Charlotte. Okay, now, this little lane here, guys, a long time ago it was a road, and now it's just kind of uh, grown up. And the deer like to come in here and bed down, and then they leave this area and they go to the surrounding fields to feed. It's a great dog walking spot, though. Lots of smells, lots of sounds, lots of fun stuff to do. And there's a bunch of cool things here too. There's a bunch of like um, a bunch of holes, you know, and a bunch of dead logs. It's just just a great adventure spot. And you know what's crazy, guys, is you have something like this close to you. I guarantee it. You know, you just don't think about it. You're driving down the road all the time, 
thinking about going and finding an adventure spot or going on vacation or whatever and taking your dog, you have to realize to dogs that live in the suburbs, if you just go find you an old weedy lot somewhere with a culvert, you know, dumping water into it, that's exactly like taking them on a trip to Africa. And I've said, I know I've said that in other videos, but never, never underestimate how much fun you can have right close to your home. You have to learn to adventure in your own backyard if you want to be a successful dog trainer because the key to successful dog training is repetition. And you can't, you know, if you've got to get in your car and drive an hour to your training field, you just, it's hard to stack those successful repetitions, you know? But if you find, if you're, you know, if you use your mind to find adventure spots in novel situations, back up a little bit, cameraman, and look at, look at this no name here. Look how happy No Name is. Look how happy Maxie is. You know, I mean, these guys are just happy. They just, they, they love being here. You know, and this, I guarantee you, you have something like this somewhere close to you. Now we're back at the pond and we're going to give Maxie his first long retrieve with the dummy launcher. Now he's been doing perfect at the kennel and he's been doing super well in the pre-adventure area. So now it's time to test him at the pond. What's going to happen is George is going to shoot the dummy with a big arc so that it goes up. It gives Maxie plenty of time to track it with his eyes. And then I'm going to let Maxie go as soon as the dummy hits the water. Now some of you might ask, hey Stoney, why aren't you making him sit and stay and wait to be released? Well, what I like to do is combine elements of a behavior chain individually once I get each of those things mastered. Okay, so like right now, I don't have the sit and wait mastered with the dummy launcher. I've got uh, wait to be released mastered in my chair drills. So if I'm sitting in my chair and I'm doing a, a chair drill, I can throw my dummy and Maxie will wait and I can let him go. But today, primarily what I'm interested in is Maxi having fun and getting in that water and putting out big effort okay and I don't want to take the you know I don't want to take a chance on messing any of that up by trying to make him stay when I don't feel like he's going to be successful so what I'll do is I'll just take my leash and I'll kind of double it up and I'll put it around his neck and I'll just kind of hold his chest a little bit and restrain him just a little bit and then let him go hopefully like he'll jump in the water super excitedly and uh, go get that dummy but we'll see Maxie, come on, Maxie. So I'm gonna go over here, pretty close to the water. And George, get in spot over, get in your place over there. Maxie, come on. No name, you sit there where you're supposed to be. Okay, all right. Come here, Maxie. Now I got just a little kind of a. I'm sitting in a little bit of a gully here, and there's a little raised area. So I'm gonna have Maxie sit on this little raised area so he can see well. Double up my leash so I can restrain him just a little bit. Okay, put this pressure down here kind of on his chest a little bit. Okay, Georgie, shoot me a dummy right over there in between the log and the bank. Maxie. And there goes Maxie. 100 miles an hour. He's doing really, really well. That makes me very, very happy. Look at that, that is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Good boy, Maxie. Now, looky there, see when he made that turn, he started puppy swimming for a second, now he's leveling out. As he gets used to that water getting up around the dummy and in his mouth a little bit, he'll get better at uh, like uh, keeping that water from going in his throat. Good boy, Maxie. Oh, back on up there, cameraman. I'm gonna kinda lay down here so you can see if he brings it all the way to my hand. Oh my gosh, good boy, Maxie. Very nice, and look. <laughs> victory and you might say Stoney why did you lay down like that well for one reason uh, you know I wanted you guys to be able to see the dog but for the other reason Maxie's very sensitive and I wanted to make sure I wasn't like standing over him and uh, like uh, like scaring him in any way because sometimes uh, he gets a little bit uh, sad looking and I didn't want y'all to think I was mean to him because I'm never mean to Maxie he's just kind of sad looking all right we'll do that one more time Dang, very nice. <laughs> that is one awesome puppy right there. He still gets excited sometimes in puppy swims though. That's, uh, that kind of cracks me up. He makes swimming so much harder than it needs to be. Come on, Maxie. You a good boy. Maxie's a natural retriever. He's a good boy. Oh, very good dog, Maxie.
Maxie's mom and dad are going to be so happy. So happy. Come around this side, cameraman, on this way. Oh, there you go. Oh, good boy, Maxie. Oh my gosh, you're such a good dog. Maxie needs a little more love, and I'm going to lay down. Oh, so you guys can see. Look, perfect. <laughs> oh, and then, of course, he shook on me. But I can't fuss at him because if I fuss at him, oh, he's going to be Mr. Feelings Hurt. Go get another one. <laughs> All right, now, what we're going to do is we're going to call that a successful session. Now we'll go do something else.